A very warm welcome back on this Monday morning, the very first edition of your Feel Good Breakfast show of 2017, Ooh. which means the festive season has ended. It's over. No more kiddie zamba, boss. Oh, no. <laughs> and of course, you and your partner will most likely spend some time uh, painting the town red, hanging out with friends and family over the festive season. But does a night out between the two of you end with fun memories or a dramatic argument? Well, Dr. Eve is here to share her advice. But first, let's hear quickly from our espresso couples whether they think it's healthy to always socialize together. Hi, I'm Afsana. Hi, I'm Peter. And we've been dating for over two years. Hi, my name's Quaid. Hi, I'm Cameron, and we are dating for three years in April. Hi, my name is Oluetu. I'm Zoe. And we have been dating for one year, eight months. Is it healthy to always socialize together? It's important to maintain like an element of your own identity, right? Where you're not just two people, but you saw yourself as an individual, right? When that becomes difficult when you are spending all of your time together in a social setting, because then it's like, how do you build your own individual experiences as opposed to being together all the time? I think in a relationship, as much as you need each other, you need your own space and your own lives. So we both have our own sets of friends, our own activities. Mm -hmm. Some cross over, some don't at all. Yes. <laughs> um, I think it is, yes. Um, even though I do think um, separate socialising is needed, but um, it is very healthy to socialise together. Yeah, separate socialising is very important. Yeah. You have your friends, I have my friends. Yes. Um, but at the same time, being able to learn how to mesh those together. What we found in early stages, like within the first six months of our relationship, that we have too much in common and we spend too much time together. Not because we don't have anyone else to spend the time with, it's just because our interests are so alike. And that way it forces us to split a bit. And that is what our couples had to say about that question. And of course, we invite you to call us on 083-913-3728 to give us your comments, your questions, maybe perhaps your recommendations on how to go about socialising together. Happy New Year, Dr. Eve. It's so nice to see you. Great to have you back. And you're looking <laughs> all sorts of fantastic. Thank you. So with our topic today, let's talk about the value of socialising together when you yeah. are together with someone you in know, a couple. You know, socialising together is one of the indicators of health or lack of health in a couple. It's mm -hmm. really vitally important. So when I'm sitting with a couple on my couch, I'm going to ask them about their social lives. How do they do it separately together? And I can feel like the discomfort settling in. It's like, mm. well, you know what? He still thinks he's single and he's a bachelor and he still kind of does his thing with his friends and he goes out alone and he leaves me at home. Yeah. And I'll say, well, do you negotiate that? Is that something that you both agree on? And you can see, and I am being kind of biased here, her face will drop and say, mm, no, he doesn't really do that. He doesn't really ask me. He just kind of does his thing. It can cause a lot of of pain mm -hmm. in a relationship and it is something that one has to negotiate. You know, we, we talk a lot about communication and negotiation. Yeah. So socialising together has a very vitally important point of being able to have a shared experience. It can be challenging and we'll look at, you know, why is it challenging? It's also vitally, vitally important as we heard from our couples who seem to be really healthy on a lot of levels around the importance of having individual experiences. So important to have social time alone but being very accountable, being very informative to your other partner. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm doing. These are the people I'm hanging out with. And this is when I'm going to be back with you. This is, there's an accountability. There's a container. There's a containment around when I'm out and socialising. And we'll talk also about agreements that couples have to make when they are socialising separately and together with each other. Yeah. Vital to be able to socialise together because, as I said, that can tell you a lot about how well we get on, what our expectations are of each other how we also are perceived by other people. Mm -hmm. So when you begin dating, it's really important once you've gone through the process of spending time alone to see how other people treat you, to see how other people think about you, mm -hmm. the respectfulness that you get from other people, how you behave. Do you change your behaviour when you are socialising with other people? Mm -hmm. How consistent are you? Yeah. And how do you treat your partner when you are socialising? Do you kind of just ignore him or her, or do you actually include them as well? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are a lot of different layers which can tell you, as I said earlier, a lot about the health of that relationship and how sustainable that relationship is going to be. Mm -hmm. And if you've been together for a long time, 
then also, you know, have you worked out yet how to socialise well together? Mm -hmm. Or do you, as you started out by saying, go home and explode in the car? Yeah. You don't have subways here, but explode in the car and say, <laughs> what was that all about? How could you have ignored me all night? You know? Yeah. So as you can hear, Dr. Eve, a wealth of knowledge when it comes to this topic. <laughs> and of course, we'd like to engage with you as yes. well. So give us a call on 083-913-3728 as we continue our relationship talk with Dr. Eve shortly. Now, Dr. Eve, have you ever heard of fricataboule? What? That's exactly what we're making in the kitchen right now.